This video, overpopulation, how real is it? What countries does it affect or does not affect? Who has an agenda? This is probably not a video I normally would produce. Hunger and starvation are real. Drought is real. Unsanitary living conditions leading to polluted drinkable water is real. Deforestation is real. Disease is real. Malnutrition is real. Death due to the above mentioned conditions is real. What is also real are corrupt governments, dictatorships, wars, hatred, uneducated citizenry. When these conditions exist, manipulation of the masses can turn fascism quickly into radical genocide and terrorism. Statisticians and demographers can use facts from one area of the world and paint a bleak and gloomy picture for the gullible and the emotionally influenced. I do not relish knowing that my fellow humankind is painfully suffering. Therefore, I will state the facts as best I can that are available, and I hope to rather allow the passion of the overpopulation spark to kindle a burning inside within the viewer to assist and give aid to people in need rather than waiting for another earthquake in Haiti or elsewhere. There is one term above all else I wish to plant deep other than actable charity and that is replacement value. Replacement value is the threshold of birth rate which a nation or country must maintain just to keep population growth rate in the zero factor. In other words, in theory, the replacement value for any country is for a couple to have two offspring or a child-bearing female to bear two children and a little bit more. Actually, the replacement figure is about 2.2. There are many countries, some of the largest by population in the world, which have a value of 2 and considerably under. This means that within the next 100 to 300 years, if the numbers stay at status quo, the population in these countries, because of their replacement value rate, will decrease. Remember, numbers are very fluid when it deals in population. We just had the American Census Bureau conduct the 210 census, and even that will not be accurate. There is no way any agency can place a figure on deaths, births, in a worldwide situation. Too much ground to cover, and too many people. It is only an elaborate equation of algorithms. So the overpopulation sales pitch is marketing by human suffering Suffering can be dealt with. Hunger can be dealt with. Micronutrient malnutrition can be dealt with. But it takes more than lip service to do this. Funds need to be put into use. Engineers need to be either volunteer or paid, as in bringing the Army Corps of Engineers in. Doctors of good conscience and persuasion often give their summer months and donate time and assistance to help the sick in the poor countries. Potable water needs to be brought in on a permanent basis through piping to eliminate sicknesses and disease. Educators need to volunteer to teach hygiene and the importance of a balanced diet. The problems and answers are complex. Pennies of prevention are minute compared to the millions of dollars of health care. Since the 1960s to the 2000s, the birth rates have dramatically dropped by 50% or more in the following countries. Tunisia, Malaysia, Turkey, Thailand, Taiwan, Japan, Brazil, Sri Lanka, and India. In 2009, the countries with two offspring or less per couple as a replacement value. These countries are Spain, Russia, Poland, the United States, Cuba, France, Ireland, China, Denmark, Estonia, Singapore, Finland, South Korea, Macedonia, the Czech Republic, Hungary, the Ukraine, Italy, and several others that are at the threshold. 
The total population for these countries is 2,117,740,134. Many eager pro-overpopulation activists often quote only the birth rate and do not mention the death rates, so the American public knows only the alarming birth rates and not the mean increase, which in many countries falls far below the two replacement value. I have traveled through many states and countries and seen hundreds of miles of open land and beautiful rivers and lush vegetation. If we are so concerned, then each government and holder of such properties could give up just a few hundred acres, subdivide it into parcels for families with utilities available, and allow for some of these hardworking families a chance to be productive and contributors. The impact on relocation in a worldwide effort of a few would be negligible and would relieve a burden in their homelands for the remaining. That is one charitable solution and feasible. In Arizona, I have traveled for hours end upon end and not seen a living soul, a house, or a farm. If the United States government is so concerned, allow limited populace from other regions to make a living as well as other countries will. We'd need bring in piping or water, wind power and solar power generate electricity, bio toilets with microbial processing. These two-stage digesting toilets produce methane as well and can provide light and heat. There are so many answers to every unique situation. Again, I state very firmly, there is no overpopulation growth which cannot be dealt with by cooperative charity and education provided by national basis by developed countries. I do hope that this gives you those who grow faint of heart when they hear overpopulation a hope. If we as human beings, not just the noble few in the Peace Corps fighting against governments who want to control the poor, but a massive world collective taking action across governmental boundaries as if needs be. I will conclude this video by saying the statistics were obtained from the CIA in the 2009 statistics. At the time in 2009, the average world population was only one half of a percent above the zero growth rate. In the next video, we will look at the map, which is color coded according to population and to growth rate replacement value. Hope to see you then.